Hey guys, how are you? I am Amit Mitra from Editex. Welcome to a new tutorial. First of all, I'm really sorry for being so much late and thank you for showing so much patience. Okay, so today we're going to learn how to create this dynamic looking graph video, I mean infographics like Magnet Media and Next Gen Tennis. I can assure you that my version is better than theirs and real easy to create that. So let's hop into After Effects. Okay, so for this you have to create a new composition and name it anything you want and choosing a full HD preset with 25 fps and minus can duration 26 second curlia okay now if you get the black screen then press uh, caps lock for manual refreshing so first of all let's make a graph composition but first of all if you have to change composition or modify composition then you can go to the title bar and modify the composition section and you can trim your composition okay now create a new black solid for the base of the composition for the graph, select the paint tool and make sure it is on stroke mode and make the stroke color to the white and for the perfect straight line, press the shift key and draw to point on the screen. And now choose the stroke width of your own choose I am selecting 180. But as you can see, there is nothing happening here. So we have to put some trim path animation in the line. But if you face some problem like this, I mean stroke going from down to upward, then you have to just press the reverse trim path option located here. And well done, problem is fixed. Now, it would be easier to animate the graph if we add a slider control. For the slider control, we need to add a null object and rename it. Now press Ctrl space for the FX console and search slider control and add it. FX console is the most free and handy tool in After Effects. You don't have to search everywhere for the effect. Just press the shortcut and search for it. You can find the full project file including FX console in my description. So just go and check it out. Hey, if you are going, I'm waiting for you. Just come back again. Okay, now go to the trim path of the shape layer. By holding the alt on the keyboard, click the stopwatch icon behind the end option. The end number should become red and a short script line should appear on the right of the timeline. Now select the spiral pick whip and link it with the slider data control. Congratulations! Now you can control your graph easily with this slider control. Hannah Yek, Bola Chatrik. Now this shape layer ki ek or copy karo or alt press karke stopwatch click karke script disable kar do. Now, niche wala jo shape tha jiska script disable kiya tha uska opacity thoda kam kar do. So that can work as a background of the graph. You can add a gradient ramp effect to the graph to add a dynamic look. For better understanding, I'm renaming the copy with slider control to bar 1 and the copy without slider control to bg1. Now select both layers and make a copy using edit duplicate. Do not duplicate from the timeline. Okay, now adjust the position of second set of bars. Press caps lock for refreshing. Okay, or a cheese. You just slider control tha, I renamed it as bar. Obviously for better understanding. Now you can go to the slider control named as bar. You can notice that this single controller controlling the both graphs. To fix it, make a few copies of the bar controller. I mean up ko jitna graph chahi hoga utna hi bar controller ki copy bana liji. Now go to the shape layer named as bar 2 and in the script rename the bar 1 as bar 2. And yeah that's all you got a separate controller for the second graph. Now repeat the same process to create another bars and their controllers. In the script replace the bar name as bar 3, bar 4, bar 5 like that. And pre-compose all of them. Now you have separate controller for all of the graphs. Now drag your desired logo to the composition. You can toggle transparency by clicking this button. Select the icon and press P for the position and S for the scale. Resize and reposition it. But in that case, I'm going to replace the icon because old one is not so good. Now add a tint effect and map black to the white. Repeat the process till you get all the icons at the top of the graph. So after placing all of the icons, your composition will look like this. If you face this kind of icon, you can use color range effect to key out the white and make it PNG, I mean make it transparent. And now, for animating the in and out animation of the icon, you can use Mr. Horses Animation Composer 3. It's the best plugin for it. Select all the layer you want to animate it and choose your desired animation. And after that, pre-compose all the icons. I'm adding the deep glow to the both layer and adjusting the parameters. But you can add the built-in glow also. But believe me, deep glow is one of the best plugin for the glow. And now I'm adding a grid to make it more aesthetic. For adding grid, add a black solid and add grid effect to it. And play with the properties to get a perfect grid. Now for adding a reflection, pre-compose the icon and bar and slider composition. Go to the project panel and edit duplicate the whole new composition with bar and icon. I mean the composition you created just now. And drag the new copy to the timeline. Make the second layer 3D. 
and rotate it to the x axis as a reflection and place it like a reflection. Press T for the opacity and turn it down a bit to the 53% at least. And add a fast box blur effect and crank it up a bit. I just want to make it a bit of blurry. Okay, right now the graphs are not animated. To animate it, go to the data slider control. Place the playhead where you want to stop the animation. Now active all the stopwatches, drag the playhead to the beginning and set all the slider value to zero. Press U to open the keyframe and easy is them. You can use Mr. Horse's keyframe manager. That is really free and automated. So you don't have to open the graph editor again and again. And after all the minutes, your animation should look like this. So in the original version, the middle grid was orange and we have to replicate it. For that, add a tint in the middle grid or you can use a fill effect but I am using tint here. I don't know why did I use but I am using it. So we have to map all the blacks and white to the orange. And now it's arrow time. Okay, for the arrow, you can use a PNG image but I am going to draw here. Okay, for the arrow, press shift and draw a straight line and make a arrow head. Go to the content shape and then a stroke and make it from butt cap to round cap and adjust the length of the end and start of the taper to make it pointy. Repeat the same steps for the straight line but this time animate the start and end length by activating the stopwatch icon. So your arrow will animate like this but now we have to add a trim path. After adding a trim path animate the start and end animation. If you face any reverse animation then press this reverse trim path option. And then the final arrow will look like this. Now move the layer from where you want to start the arrow and trim the excess part. Rename the layer and you can position it anywhere, anyhow you want. Now this graph ka look thoda better karne ke liye, main iske niche ek straight line draw karunga, jiska fill uh, zero hoga, fill kuch nahi hoga, stroke hoga thin point ka, aur iska taper main thoda adjust kar lunga. और इसको डैशेस ऐड कर दूंगा और डैशेस का जो ऑफसेट है उसको मैं एनिमेट कर दूंगा सो दैट ये जो डैशेस है ये थोड़ा स्टैटिक ना लगे इसलिए नाउ वी कैन ऐड अ कैमरा एंड एडजस्ट द पोजीशन ऑफ द ग्राफ्स बट ये कैमरा बाद में भी ऐड किया जा सकता है लेकिन आई एम एडिंग इट राइट नाउ आफ्टर दैट यू कैन ऐड दिस बॉक्स एंड एनिमेट इट एज़ वेल बट इट इज क्वाइट सिंपल सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू शो दिस इन दिस वीडियो जस्ट अ सिंपल थिंग यू कैन ड्रॉ एनीथिंग एंड एनिमेट इट बाय ट्रिम पथ एंड या दैट्स ऑल After that, the coloring these grids are really simple. You just have to open the composition and select the shape and add some tint effect there and change the color as you desire. But don't forget to animate the amount to tint. After applying the tint effect to your selected layers, your final composition will look like this. Now this thing is only some keyframing and positioning effects. Uh, so I'm not going to show this because that is very simple. Uh, so I will jump into the most good looking thing in the project, the animated icons. Okay, for this, go to the composition and select the icon. I'm renaming it for the better understanding. Now select the puppet pin tool and place the pins in the joint. I mean the place you see my move. And if you think some pins are placed in the wrong position, then delete it. Now move the playhead a bit forward and move the pins to the next position of the character. After completing the first loop, you can copy and paste the keyframe again and again. Hey look, the PNG is animated now. Yeah, it's a quite, uh, I mean simple but it's a hectic work. Believe me, it will take so much time and a bit of creativity. Okay, for this football icon, I placed a pin in the ball and two in the body. So I am just moving in the appropriate position and after doing that, I am going to animate the ball. First thing is he is going to kick the ball. So I am going to place the ball along with his feet and the next frame will be the ball is flying away. So I am just dragging it outside a bit, making the path a bit of curve and I don't know how to describe it, just uh, watch and follow it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frankly speaking, that is a really bad animation, but it will do in this project, so never mind. Now quickly complete all the animations and let's see the magic. How these small details are making a big difference in your project. Now for the text value, we have to add a text and type the numbers you want to show in the graph. Place the text where you want it to be. Now add a slider controller effect in the text. After that, click the arrow and open the source text. By holding Alt, click the stopwatch icon behind the source text. Now click and drag that pick web tool to the slider to parent it. Now your text value is parented to the slider tool. You can adjust the amount by dragging the slider tool. 
Okay, now we have to add m after the numbers because the numbers are represented in the millions. For that, you have to modify expression a bit. Write this plus space quotation in m quotation out. Now you can see there are infinite decimals, but we have to get rid of it. That is really really simple. Once again, we have to go in the expression menu and type our expression. After the slider, we have to add dot value dot to fixed and then zero between the parentheses or first bracket. Okay, the trick is if you write this expression and type zero between the brackets, then you won't have any decimals. But if you add one, then you will have one decimal and if you add two, then you will have two decimals. Now you can repeat the same process for all of your numbers and your project will look awesome. You can add various animation in the project by keyframing, rotation, position, scale and more. Then you can add text based on your project. But in this video, I'm not going to show you that because that's a really beginner level thing and I will not waste your time. You can do your text and customization as you want and I will suggest you a plugin called Atomix text animation preset. You can use it uh, to easy animating your text. But if you really want to know how to add text and animate it like professional way, I will add a tutorial in the right corner. In our next video, we will learn how to do this. I mean this cool looking map animation, this bar animation, the number counter, the glass morphograph, this infographs and along with it the backgrounds, the particle system, everything. This time no delay, I promise.